Welcome to the Advanced Racing Analysis, Adriana. So this video is about analyzing the super license issue that kept Patricia Award out of Formula One. So I will analyze how he got his super license points and the sticking point that contributed to him not being a super license points and why Red Bull decided to go after him in the first place. Patricia Award got his super license points, first of all, in finishing third in the Mexican Formula 4 Championship. So Mexican Formula uh, 4 Championship, he was third and he earned seven super license points for that in 2015 going to 2016. And in 2016, he was in the Pro Mazda Championship and he was second and he earned another seven points for that. So that's 14 points in total in 2016. And in 2017, he was in the IMSA Prototype Challenge Championship and he, was, he won the title in that championship and they actually won seven out of the eight, eight races. And he got 18 points for that. And in 2018, he was in Indy Lights. He was first Indy Lights and he averaged, um, he, he got 15 points for that. And he actually beat Colton Herder. In total, that's 47 points. So to get a super license, you actually only need 40 points. In 2017, in the prototype challenge in IMSA, there was only three full-time cars. The only full-time driver lineup was actually Patricia Award's car. He was teamed with James French, and so that was the only full-time driver lineup. The one the car had uh, Don Yant, and he was the uh, he he was there the whole season, but he had rotating drivers, so no other, so there were pretty much only three full-time drivers. And yeah, so, and only three full-time, and only three full-time cars. So that championship gave him 18 points. So that's the single biggest haul of points he has for his super license. So if that, if they take that whole championship away, yes, he has a big loss at the big disadvantage. I assume the Red Bull could not bring him into Formula One because other teams complained about it. Other teams looked at the championship, maybe the FIA, or chances are maybe even Formula 2 teams, Formula 3 teams, they looked at, they went back to check on his super license point and they brought that sticking point. They made it an issue saying because there was only three cars, so he could not have a super license points. But the super license guidelines do not explicitly mention how many cars a championship needs. They do not mention anything. So if the IMSA prototype challenge points were taken, off he would only have 29 points so to get to 40 points he would need 11 points from somewhere so that's why red bull wanted to place him in super formula the only way for him to be able to make up that difference is he pretty much had to be at least third in the championship so third would have got him 15 points so that would be more than enough to make up the difference so he would have to um, yeah, so he would have to be third and that means that he would have to be second or third He average a second or third place finish in the last four remaining races So after his first two races, he I think he was 14th. So in his third race he was six. So that was it So that's why um, they took him out of the team because they figured he will not be able to make it but it wasn't his fault because um, even though Stoffel Van Dorn was a uh, second in the championship and Pierre Gasly um, was also I think uh, uh, yeah, run up in the championships and they both had win in the championship but when they went to super formula they had the whole season they went through testing and simulators and all that stuff but he didn't get to do that he just got thrown into the championship after then ticked them was kicked out by red bull like i said earlier i believe the protest was brought on by formula 3 f2 and maybe even some f1 teams so why would they bring up a protest against um red bull having this driver well the simple answer is that it's uh, the whole F1 ladder system is also a business, simple as that. So that's why it generates so much money. That's how they're able to travel, build the cars and do everything that they do. It's a business, it's a business. So um, yeah, so in the business, you know, you have to, especially big business, you have to protect what makes you money. And what makes them money is these youngsters coming in wanting to get to F1. So they have to be known as the, the premier series for getting youngsters to F1. So if all of a sudden Red Bull brings in this guy who has not gone through the traditional system, he did go through F4, but that was the Mexican F4. It's still slightly different than European F4. But and then all his other uh, championships were in the U.S. 
So if they bring him in, and so that would show all the other youngsters that, you know, the traditional model is too expensive because Formula 2, Formula 3, so especially Formula 2 itself now, I'm hearing that it costs, you know, a good $1.8 to $2 million to get in for a championship for a competitive ride. So compared to Indy Lights, uh, Indy Lights, I believe, is a million dollars for a competitive ride, for a full season competitive ride. And now they're actually trying to bring it down. So imagine how the, yeah, that's half the price. If they brought him in and other youngsters saw that and he was doing pretty well, which Red Bull would not bring him if they didn't feel that he would be good, and I believe he would be good, this guy is a solid. That would show that the traditional system is too expensive. You could go over there, get your experience for cheaper, and still be in the running for Formula One. Why did Red Bull chose Patricia O'War? The simple thing is that this guy is a racer and he's, he's, yeah, he's fast. He has one pretty much everywhere. He, he's a quick study. He picks up things fast. Um, he beat Colton Herta in Indy Lights. So Colton Herta, he beat Colton Herta. Colton Herta is the son of Brian Herta. And um, he was a sensation. He's rookie year in Indy Lights. And this guy is very fast too. But in the last, they were teammates and he beat Colton Herta. Colton Herta had a one full season the year before and I believe Patricia Ward only had four races and that's when he quit to go to uh, IMSA and then came back the next year so he didn't have a full season in the lights but when he came for his full season he beat Colton Herta. His de debut at Sonoma in Indy cars he qualified fifth and he beat the only person people who qualified ahead of him were former race winners or uh, people are uh, former champions uh, in Indy cars. So, and then he finished ninth. So Colton Hurd, I believe, had qualified 19th. So that's a big difference. So they had the same team, so pretty much the same resources. If anything, Colton Hurd, I might have better resources because he's affiliated with the team. He's, uh, yeah, his dad is affiliated with Andretti. So if anything, his car could have been better prepared. In 2018, at the Daytona 24 hours, he qualified fourth overall in a Orca P2 car. So that was the time when the DPIs and the P2 cars were supposed to be uh, BOP to be exact, to be the same, but the DPI cars were pretty much, you know, faster um, than the P2 cars. And he qualified fourth and he beat several DPI cars. And he was the only uh, P2 car to qualify that high. In the end, like everybody knows, Red Bull ended up letting him go. Why did they let him go? Because they could not find a way for him to get a super license. It's not that they were booting him, uh, letting him go because he could not. Um, they didn't think that he was good enough or they just wanted to let him go. Just another of their scheme to get rid of youngsters. It's just that they wanted him to really be in Formula 1. And they could not get a way for him to be in Formula 1. So pretty much the FIA and Formula 1 locked the system down with the the uh, super license system. It was first to make sure youngsters had enough uh, skills, enough um, yeah, enough skills, enough uh, uh, experience to be in Formula One and were old enough, they had to be at least 18, but now it's being used as more of a political system, is more as more as politics to to reinforce their whole system, to reinforce that whole lottery system as a business model to, to make sure they um they lock it down if you want to make it to formula one you have to go through us so formula one didn't get to be how big it is but you know um by just running business anyhow we just like any good business to have trade secrets and um that's why we all follow it you know if it wasn't as big as it is we you know i probably would be making a video about formula one and you probably wouldn't be following it so it has its good and bad, so I guess we just got to take it or leave it. So that's the way, if you love it, you love it. If you don't love it, I guess that's the way it just said. But it would have been nice to see um, him in in Formula One, you know. Um, I would have liked to see him. But the good thing is that it helps the Toro Rosso drivers because I believe had he been, in, been able to get in Formula One, he would have booted one of the Toro Rosso drivers. Maybe he would have been a test driver for the in 2020 and whoever didn't make the grade, he would have booted them out, maybe even this year. So we don't know. Maybe, maybe even for 20, he would have had a seat for 2020. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope it was uh, informational as far as the what happened with his uh, uh, super license issue. And thank you very much. Please hit the like button and subscribe to the video. Thank you for watching.